What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jeff Guy here and in today's video we're going over my top five rules for fantasy rebuilds in Madden 22. Fantasy drafts are some of the most fun you can have in Madden and whether you're in an online CFM or you're playing against the computer, following my five rules here are going to allow you to stay ahead of the competition both in terms of the draft board acquiring talent and making sure you're not reaching for players you don't need to be that being said let's get into this video make sure you like comment subscribe do all the things super helpful for me to bring content to you guys let's go rule number one is to draft a guy with every single pick in the first 10 to 15 rounds now what do i mean by a guy a guy is someone i would consider an absolute game changer for your team and someone who is a core essential component of your roster for not only the first year of the rebuild but for five to potentially ten years depending on how long you play for your team a guy like tom brady is definitely a 99 overall and a superstar x-factor player but he is like 85 years old and can't be a guy for your team in the future but someone like Justin Herbert or Trey Lance or Joe Burrow, who's young and has a good dev trait and might not be might be a lower overall guy, is actually someone you want to reach for because they're gonna be a guy for you at a high impact position and a high impact and a high level player for the next 10 to 15 years. However long you're gonna play this, you're gonna have that guy. And using your first, second through your 10th round pick on these kinds of players is gonna give you the peace of mind and the cornerstones for you to build your franchise. I would also say that guys typically aren't found at running back, offensive line, fullback, uh, linebacker, safety, or special teams. So with your first couple picks, I would absolutely prioritize quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, defensive ends, D tackles, depending on who you get, and then corners. If you stock up on those positions, you're going to be in great shape moving forward. The number two rule for Madden Fantasy Rebuilds, and this especially goes for online drafts, is to prioritize youth and speed over overall and dev trait. Michael Thomas is the perfect example of a guy I want to stay as far away from as I can. He's 28, which is already past the age of regression in Madden, and while he might be 6'3 and have a high overall, he only has 87 speed and like 80-ish route running. He is not a player that I absolutely like would even consider building around. I actually once had him in a fantasy rebuild when the CPU auto drafted him for me, and I just cut him instantly. I was like, I can't deal with this. And just by sorting by speed, I see 10 receivers that I would want infinitely more than Michael Thomas on my team. I would take any single one of these guys because they're insanely fast, they have good dev traits, and they're way more valuable to my team than Michael Thomas. Stephon Gilmore is another guy at a high impact position that I would not reach for early on. He's already 30 and has 91 speed. I would rather just search by speed, see where it is, and find some of these guys. Dante Jackson is easily one of my top, my top five, top 10 corners in the game. Denzel Ward, Farley, Stokes, all these guys are much better options than Stephon Gilmore. Make sure you're prioritizing their speed and your ages over your overalls and development traits. Because if you're able to get a secondary of Eric Stokes, Caleb Farley, and Denzel Ward using three of your top 20 picks, that is an elite secondary that nobody's going to be able to burn. Rule number three is actually just being aware of the draft board. If you're in a fantasy draft, it can take hours to finish, especially if you're doing all like 50 or 60 rounds, however many it is. What you want to do is, especially in the early rounds, be conscious of which teams are drafting and who's drafting what positions. If there starts to be a run on wide receivers, be careful not to get sucked into that because you're probably just going to get a guy you don't want if you reach for a receiver. And that actually leads me into rule number four, which is start runs don't end them. There are 64 picks in between your individual picks in a fantasy draft. It's so important for you to understand how the value is going to change between each of your picks. So if you start a run on a position, say no one's taken a tight end yet in the draft and it's round three and you're set with, oh, Kelsey, Kittle, Andrews, all the best guys are there. You can actually start that run to hopefully fill up some of those 64 slots in between your pick and your next pick. So if no one's taking a tight end and no one's going to do it and you don't have one yet, but you're looking at getting maybe one or two receivers with your next pick. What you can do is actually take a tight end and that should start a run in order that other people are going to want to take tight ends when 
those spots fill up the, of the 64, say four or five tight ends go, that's another four or five wide receivers that may not have been available who are now on the board for you because people are taking tight ends. Like a guy like Jamar Chase, a guy like C.D. Lamb, uh, some of the other really good options in here. Oh, Kirshen Kirk's a good one. Robbie Anderson. Like some of those guys might actually slip to you because you start a run at a different position. And that's going to allow you to get better value moving down the board. So, for example, I love Darren Waller and Madden, 90 speed, superstar development. I would take him, oh, superstar X Factor now. I would take him in the second or the third round to one, start a, a run on tight ends, knowing that I have one of the best, if not the best, in the game. And then I can also wait on my receivers because I know that other people are going to see, oh, tight ends are slipping. Let me go grab one. My number five rule is something that I absolutely stand by and have started to build basically all of my teams around. And that is don't undervalue height, especially in the defensive secondary. There are so many fast corners and so many fast DBs, but what makes interceptions happen a lot of the time is actually how tall a guy is and how high he can reach and how high he can jump. A guy like Greedy Williams is such a rock solid option at corner at six foot two of height. Like look at all these other guys, 5'9", 5'11", 5'10", 5'11", 5'11". Like there's very few corners who are both fast and tall. And if you can get those guys on your team, you're going to be in a much better position to go out, play man coverage, and force guys into throwing passes against your fast, tall DBs. They're going to get picked all the time. Like Caleb Farley, Eric Stokes are obviously two of the best guys. But in terms of other guys who are pretty tall, like Richard Sherman used to be that guy. He's not there anymore. There's another six foot two. Michael Davis, like another guy you can kind of go after. Pay attention to the height as you're drafting, specifically on DBs. Don't let them slip if they're tall and fast. Go grab them. Let me know if you find this video helpful. I'll be dropping another one on which players we should be drafting and where you should be drafting them next. Make sure you follow, comment, subscribe so you know when that video is coming. I'll see you in the next one.